Wow, Whitney, how many videos were you filming this sweater? Good question, Whitney, all of them. Today I'm going to do a review of The Shattered World by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. Disney Hyperion sent this early to me for review, so that is what we're doing today. Hey! The Shattered World is a sequel slash companion to the first book, These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. If you read that one and you enjoyed it, I feel like you would enjoy and love this one as well. So no fear, if you feel like you're going to be let down by this because you loved the first one so much, don't feel threatened. It's really awesome. Let's get on with the synopsis. So this book takes place on the planet of Avon. Avon is basically a swamp. What are you doing in my swamp? The natives of the island, which are called the Fianna or Fianna, have been there for a while. Recently, the military decided to drop on in and be like, hey, we're gonna make a little establishment here too. Avon is known for having something called the Fury. Any person that comes on to the planet that is not from there, they experience this thing where after a couple of months, their eyes dilate and they go crazy and they shoot people. Then they wake up from it, almost like a possession of some sort and they have no idea what causes it. So cue our main character, Jubilee and Flynn. Jubilee is a military commander. She's like top notch. Flynn is one of those nativist rebel people. Basically, there's a huge feud between them because the natives are trying to force the military out, but they're not strong enough to do that, and the military is trying to keep them to stop rebelling. Flynn and Jubilee have a running in, and Flynn eventually takes Jubilee hostage. A bunch of stuff happens. They go back and forth between the military and the caves where the rebels live. Then they realize they might have a common goal in this war. Do we have a basic gist of this book? I hope so, because I'm just gonna hop into my review now. This book is really reminiscent of The Host by Stephanie Meyer. It's obviously different because they're not the exact same thing, but as I was reading it, I was like, wow, this is really similar. I love The Host, so that was definitely something that was not a bad thing for me. It's like a, I don't wanna say sci-fi version of The Host, because The Host is sci-fi, but it's like, Maybe an across the universe version of the host. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I loved it. From the beginning, however, this is something that I started reading and I was like, oh my gosh, this is starting out really cheesy. Throughout the progression of the first half of the book, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cliche. And that's definitely one of the things that brought this book down for me was that a lot of the dialogue and a lot of the actions were just like, Ooh, yeah, like, wasn't that good, it was kind of cheesy or corny or cliche. Around the 200 page mark of this book, halfway through, I started thinking, this book is putting me in a slump because it's so cliche. But I pushed through it, and it's honestly not a slow book. But, I will say, the first half of this book, they start going on to things like, yeah, she's not from our side, but she's different, and it's like, that was just so cliche to me, and it was really bothersome. It definitely gets better. That's only the first half of the book. And I would say that if that sounds like something that's going to annoy you, just push through it because it gets a lot better. I'm not sure how well I can go into this without spoiling it, but there becomes a point, like I said, where it goes from these two entities thinking they're complete opposites. There's a turning point in the book where they realize you're not as bad as the stereotypes make you sound, etc. Again, going in with the whole cliche thing, but I felt like that was done a little bit too quickly. Like, they started to trust each other really fast. And that's something that I found really kind of annoying because it's like the entire first half of the book, they're like so set in stone about their feelings. And Jubilee's talking about how she can't be irresponsible or do anything bad. And yet they're like breaking laws to be with each other and stuff like that. And I just... it. It didn't really make sense to me because it was too fast. This kind of plays in with the insta-love. I felt like there's a tiny bit of insta-love. I'm going to go back to the world for a little bit because I loved the world in this book. I love I, You Saw My Dance. But the swamp, that was so cool. I loved how the sky was always murky and they said, said, said he'd never seen the stars before and just a bunch of stuff about that planet it was so cool. But I felt like we needed more of a world building. In the first book, we got a huge explanation of the new planet. And in this one, we didn't really get much. Like, we got physical descriptions of the Earth. But I would want to know things like, what is the size of the planet? How old is the planet? What's its location in comparison to 
the big planet everyone's on. I forgot what it's called. I feel like the planet itself was kind of a part of the plot, so I wanted to know more about it. And lastly, as far as Tarver and Lilac being in this book, I loved it. I feel like that was the best part of the book for me, is whenever Tarver came in. I loved Tarver so much, and so when he was in this one, I was like, yes, 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 what are you doing in the swamp? And is that a bad thing, though, that the character that's not even a main character of the book made the story better? Possibly, but I liked Flynn and I liked Jubilee. It's just they weren't really extraordinary characters to me because, again, the way that they just trusted so easily, it was kind of bizarre to me, so they didn't seem very real. Regardless, this book is such a fast read. I think I read like the last 150 pages just in bed on a Saturday, like unable to put it down. I felt like the conflict was resolved very well. There's a tiny bit of a loose ending, I feel. It does, like I said, resolve the conflict well, but then there's kind of a question as to now what, and I hate when books make me feel like that, now what? I'm not sure if there's a third book after this. I know there's a novella in this series. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be in between them or coming out after them. I actually have no idea what it's about. I can't imagine this would be the last book in the series because there is a lot of drama with the Lulbrooks industries still waiting to be resolved. So hopefully in the next book we can get all that figured out. Hopefully all these characters will make a reoccurrence and I highly recommend you pick up The Shattered World if you read the first one and liked it because it's an amazing continuation of the world. The characters I made kind of seem like weenies and <laughs> really cheesy, but honestly, they're extremely strong characters. From the beginning, I was like, wow, finally, a female character that can beat someone up and be confident about themselves. I was definitely getting the Honey Nut Felios whenever they had their little intimate scene. This review made this book seem a lot worse than it actually is, but I gave it four stars. It was a really nice read. So thank you for watching my review, everybody. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.